CataractCoach.com. The capsule rexus runs out. Now, how can you safely complete this case? This is going to be tough. Let's watch the video here. Now, surgeon's operating on this white cataract. Here comes the main phaco incision. Looks like it's sitting superiorly. Using a needle to decompress the capsule bag. Look at the milk coming out. Aspirate, aspirate, aspirate. I like the shaking there also to decompress the bag. That's really important. That's going to be a lot helpful. Now, let me tell you about RenderRounds.com, our new sister channel. It's already been launched for a month, and I know you'll love it. It's growing every single day, a new retina video, so much to learn, check it out. Now, here comes the rexus, watch carefully here. You've decompressed the bag already, getting the rexus to come around, grabbing the edge there. Now watch, 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 look at that going out. Which way should we be pulling? You need to do the little maneuver. No, it ran out and got amputated. Now what do you want to do? Surgeons are going to come in with some micro scissors and cut the other side of the rexus to kind of bring it around. But now you've got that one weak spot where the rexus ran out. Now, could it, could it have been saved? Probably if you use that little type maneuver, pulling back on the flap before it gets all the way out to the designer support. Now you've completed it. But remember, as you operate, you've got that one weak area. Well, don't get the bubbles in the eyes. Get the bubbles out. Here comes the chop technique here. Chop on the left hand. Fake a probe on the right hand. Yes, we've sped the video up here to be efficient. Now let's see. Fagal probe going in, chopper going around the equator. Very nicely done. Beautiful. Very nice. Rotate it around. Again, you got to be very careful here because you don't want that one area to run all the way out. Now, your technician needs to set up your fagal machine so you don't have so many air bubbles. Here comes another chop almost. And there's a good chop. Looks very good. A very advanced surgeon here doing a beautiful job. Aspirate these pieces down again. How do you finish this case without putting stress on the capsular bag? Because that one area has a weak spot now. If you get the nucleus out, clean up the cortex, get the lens, and you can have a beautiful case and no further issues here. But if you're not careful and you stress the bag, you can cause that one area to rip all the way back to the posterior capsule, and then you're in a hot mess. So how do you recover from it? So let's watch carefully here. So we're just getting these last few pieces out. There's some subincisional material. Maybe, I like this idea, great idea. Inject viscoelastic, go to position zero, then come out. Don't let the AC collapse. I think that's a really smart idea. Viscoelastic, as you know, is cheaper than vitreous. Now, going inside here, aspirate, aspirate. Here's the cortex removal using a coaxial probe. Sometimes it's easier to do a bimanual approach, but certainly coaxial works here as well, especially with the bent tip. It's just that subincisional material has to be removed. I, I agree, remove this stuff first. And do the area where the runout is last. So in case you get unlucky, at least you don't have any cortex left in the bag. So there you go. Okay, some subincisional stuff still left. Get that out. And then again, don't let the AC collapse. Don't let the bag collapse. Once you get this cortex out, fill up the bag gently with your viscoelastic and get that lens in. So again, cleaning it out nicely. There's that subincisional space. You can also tilt the eye out of primary here a little bit if you need to get better access to that subincisional area. Or again, use a bimanual approach. Get an extra pairs of pieces here. Use a 23 gauge bimanual setup and you'll be good to go. Let's see what the surgeon's going to do here. Again, still trying to get that subincisional material. Your technician's doing a lot of squirts for you. There's a lot of BSS going on that cornea. Good job. And now what? Viscoelastic probably, right? Yeah, fill the bag. I agree. Good job. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Fill that bag up nice and gently. Do not overfill the bag. Now here comes the lens going in. It looks like a single piece, no, three piece lens. Three piece lens going in, leading haptic. Here's the optic. That's probably a smart move. The three piece lens is going to give you a few more options here for placement. And now get this rotated around here. There's the trailing haptic. Delivering in that nice and easy. And there you go. Get that trailing haptic in. Everything's in the bag. Now, should you leave the one haptic pushing outwards at the site of the zional weakness or the capsular weakness that ran out to the zional support? Uh, I don't know if it makes a huge difference. I'd probably want to rotate this lens about 90 degrees, but and look, our surgeon's doing it. Yeah, there's a balance, though. So at like this point, I just leave things well enough alone right now. I would not do further manipulation. Seal up the incision here. Is there some subincisional cortex? There it is, out now. Cleaned up very nicely. And now finish up the case here. I get BSS on a cannula in your left hand to inject that to not deflate the eye at all. And let's see what we're going to do. When you come out of this eye, nice and easy. Again, I'd limit the manipulations at this point. Okay, finger to hold the incision down. That's an interesting technique. I've not tried that before. Finger seems like a little bit of a large instrument to use on the eye like here. 
But let's find out. Here's the BSS on the cannula. Hydrate the main incision. And looks like he escaped. So yes, beautiful job by our guest surgeon. Everyone has this happen to them every once in a while. The capsule exit will run out. The question is, how do you recover? The surgeon did a pretty good job. How would you recover? Leave me a comment below. And remember, check out retinarounds.com. New video for retina every day. And it's even great for cataract surgeons like you and me.